Thursday night at Louis with Terry and Rob. Boomer Rob. Boomer Terry. And we are at Louis on Campus Corner. Like as always. As always on Thursday nights, enjoying some great food, some cold drinks. Um, remember to, wherever you're at, subscribe to us on YouTube. Terry, I'd like to say we are not affiliated with the University of Oklahoma. But we do have a few years of eligibility left. Got a couple. A couple. One or two. And there we, we got... Um, we may be needed on the defense after we'll get into a little bit of stuff here, but also hey, remember, well, guys, shocker, we're going to talk about the defense, yeah. I mean, so, um, but uh, remember, Friday night, April 12th, 6 to 10 p.m., right here at Louis, this uh, Friday night spring game pregame. Come out and join a bunch of Sooner fans who will be out here enjoying a good time, maybe doing some podcasts, some YouTube videos, or something, but. Rob, like we said before, I can't see anything right now. Yeah, one too many of the, uh, no. Yeah, no, no, I, I've been to the eye doctor and had my eyes dilated. So um, I can do this and it's not too bad, but the, the light coming from the That's okay, you look cooler camera, that way. I look cooler I mean, this yeah, way? Yeah, it hides some features yeah. that, you know, yeah. might be unsightly or not. My, but yeah, it, it's and our little notes. Rob's gonna have to. I'm gonna have to follow him along with the notes because it it looks like I'm looking into the bottom of Lake Eufaula. So. I took I took hooked on phonics, so, <laughs> so we're all good. We're all good okay. there. But we got three topics tonight. Uh, which one do you want to start off with, Rob? Let's see the defense, the defense, or the defense? No, 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 oh. no, no. Let's save the quarterback talk for last. Okay. How about that. Um, let's talk about Bill Beatenbow. Bill Beatenbow and his offensive line that is gargantuan. Gargantuan. Okay. I, I'm not sure if everybody knows or if everybody goes and looks at the, the sizes and the speeds and what I mean you can't look at the strength and the speed unless you have that, you know, pass or whatever. Right. But you can still see how big they are. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, you know, big doesn't mean everything, but big with Bill Beatenbow. I think means a lot because I think whatever he's going to do, he's going to turn you in to a big beast. So out of the big beast. guys, I guess, the smallest big guy is 6'6", 326. That's, yeah. <laughs> That's the Out of the big group, the big, big group. Boys. Okay, there's two groups of offensive linemen, the big boys <laughs> mm -hmm. and then the little boys. Well, the little boys are anybody that's 6'5 or under. Right. Which they're all pretty much 6'5. But there are four of them that are 6'6 or over. So 6'6", 326, 6'6", 336. You had a couple more sandwiches in the yeah. <laughs> 6'7", 340. And hold on to your hats, 6'9", 313. That is huge. That is enormous. That's, that's a Volkswagen Beetle. I bet okay. he can fill a gap. He can fill a gap or yeah. clear a gap. <laughs> or clear one, one of the two. Yeah. And, and th these are guys that are in the system right now. And I like what Beatenbow said the other day. He wasn't happy when they started spring, but he's happy now. They're progressing. They're doing what he's expecting them to do at this point in time in spring practice. Yeah. Well, then, you know, they're going to grow. They're going to get stronger. I mean, they're working hard right now. I mean, yeah. now it's not their off season. They're working hard right now. Right. So when football season gets here, they don't lift quite as hard as they do in the off season. Right. So they're working out really hard right now. So we'll see. This guy at 6'9", 313, maybe 6'9", 340 at the start of the season. <laughs> I mean, so. And what's his name? I think that's the one. What? David Swabby. David Swabby. He's from, uh, I think, the Bahamas. Oh, really? Yeah. So, um, but. Do they play football over there? Uh, no, I don't think they do. Well, they have a bowl, the Bahama Bowl. Oh, well, maybe so, they do. <laughs> but um, Bill Beatenbow, we've said it before, whatever they're paying him ain't enough. He needs a raise. <laughs> we are thinking about, Rob and I are thinking about getting a, a private security team together and following Bill Beatenbow around all the time to make sure nobody calls him. You know, but basically the Bill Beatenbow Secret Service. What do you think? To keep anybody from trying to hire him, <laughs> getting phone calls, we'll monitor his phone calls because this guy puts together the heart and soul of, of, the, this, team. of the team. Yeah. The, and he is amazing. You know, Creed Humphreys, we're not going to get to see him. You know, and Creed Humphreys is one of the little guys. Okay. He's 6'3. Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. But he's not going to be playing. 
But Beat and Bo, as we've had JY uh, from the, uh, the Football Brainiacs on, he is a master at putting not the best guys in that position, but the best unit right. out there of guys that know each other and work each other. Well, and you know, we just we just give these guys accolades because of how big they are. That doesn't necessarily translate into a good offensive lineman. Right. I mean, they got to work, and they got to do, and they got to do the work. Well, but, it's a lot. Of, it's a lot about technique. Right. As JY, I'm sure would explain if he were on here. It's probably more about technique than it is just overall power and strength. But I'm gonna tell you something. Being big and strong does help. Does. does help. <laughs> <laughs> and and I'm excited to see what this offensive line does. Now, here's something that I got to thinking about, Rob. Let's transition into the defense. If this defensive line, regardless of what units are out there, just cuts up this offensive line, we got things to worry about. Yeah. Because uh, our defense is at best. Our defense is not that good. Yeah. Yeah. Shocker. This just in. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Pump the brakes there, uh, <laughs> Mr. Negative Defensive Boy. <laughs> Okay, here's the, you know, last week, Coach Grinch comes out and says, we're a long, long way from being where we need to be for an Oklahoma defense. Yeah. This week, he comes out and says, we are light years away from being a good defense. I thought he said a couple of light beers. <laughs> no, it's it's light years. Okay, all right. Okay, which I know a lot of people want to, you know, maybe that's just coach speak to, you know, pump the players up. If you listen to some of the stuff he says, I mean, you know, he was, Monday scrimmage, he was frustrated. He was not happy. He's not happy with how the defensive line is playing. Well, and I think he's a... Uh, um, a fans coach, you know, he's not gonna, he's not gonna blow smoke. He's yeah. not gonna put lipstick on a pig. He's gonna say, listen, you guys are light years away from being good. Right. Not, <laughs> not <laughs> just good. You're light years away from that. So, and you know, it, it's obvious listening to him talk that he's getting frustrated. I don't. I'm not gonna say frustrated. Maybe upset is that I don't think a lot of these guys are progressing the way he wanted them to progress. Okay. Um, I mean, some. You know, one of the things he said was that you know we, it, it, it's he was upset basically because it was. I guess he didn't say this, but translation, it was crap that they put out on the field on Monday. And he goes, but we'd, if, it had, if we'd have done good, and he was upset with everybody, but if it would have been tremendous, I'd have been upset with a lot of guys. <laughs> so he has high expectations. Well, that's good. But I think, you know, I think the stuff that you're hearing him say, I don't think it's coach speak. I, I think he, I think Alex Grinch thought he was coming in to Oklahoma and there were going to be better players on this defense than what he's got. Well, I mean... I, I would hope that would be the case. You'd come in and just find this wealth of talent. But it appears that it, the talent may not be as good as, as the coaching. Right. So we get the talent here, plus the coaching. I mean, we're already a blue blood elite team. Right. So that puts us over the top. Yeah. And we win like 10 national titles back to back. <laughs> and, you know, the, it, 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 we've had guy defensive commits decommit he doesn't seem to worry about it they're not happy with the style of defense but we're going to find people you know to fit in there you know that you know to, to that fit this style of defense the other thing is that on the way over here was listening to one of the radio stations here um and uh caleb kelly is out indefinitely really lower leg injury um they just came out today i guess he got hurt today and jordan kelly is out indefinitely a lower leg injury it appears that caleb kelly is going to need surgery so one of the better players on a defense that is not very good there's going to have a hard time being ready it looks like before fall practice well we've said it once we've said it a hundred times we cannot afford injuries right on that side of the ball for sure you know i mean what we may need to do rob is me and you start working out 
you know, back in my younger days and my smaller days, I did play some linebacker. You know, maybe we go out there, you fill a gap, and I run some linebacker. It looks, you know, it looks like they may need some help. Listen, I'm not even sure I'd be good as the water boy. Okay, I'd be like, get your own water. Okay, so I don't be sitting back there throwing them water bottles. Yeah, yeah I don't know how that's gonna work out. So uh, we probably better just let them do it. But. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, and, and we've had comments and we've had DMs, you know, about, you know, you guys are spending a lot of time, you know, give them a chance. Guys, our defense has been terrible, and our defense is the the core of what's wrong with this team right Listen, now. Listen, if they improve, we're going to say, hey, they're improved. Exactly. If they start dominating, we're going to say, hey, we got a dominating defense. But, but that's the storyline right now. You know, is our defense is bad. We've got a new defensive coordinator who's saying our defense is bad. We're working to correct it. And then we have the quarterback situation. Yes. You know, which is fun. Yep. And I had this little idea that I brought up to Rob today is wouldn't it be great if Tanner Mordecai was named the starting quarterback? Okay, tell me how that would be great. Okay, well, first off, you're going to have to, to comp- because this looks like mud. Uh-huh. Tanner okay. Mordecai, give us his stats. So Tanner was a four-star dual-threat quarterback uh, last year. Uh, he's 6'2", 206. He runs a 4'8", 640. Uh, he's played in the system against FAU and UCLA. Right. Jalen Hurts is a four-star dual-threat quarterback since 2016. He's a 6'2", 218, 440, 40, and he's 24 and 2 at Alabama. Right. Now, one thing, too, that I didn't realize, and these, these stats are according to um, 24 7 Sports, that's where I got them at, is um, for one, I didn't know that Tanner was that big. I didn't know that he was that fast because a 4 eight's not too bad. It's not blinding speed. It's not a 4-4. Four, four. No, it's not a 4-4, four, four, uh, but it ain't slow. It definitely is not slow. Okay. Um, of course, I think we got linemen that run that, don't we? <laughs> probably, yeah. probably so. But here's my thought behind if Tanner Mordecai is the quarterback. One of two things. Either what you said earlier. If Tanner Mordecai is named the starting quarterback, that means... Jalen Hurts is not very good. Jalen Hurts is not very good. Or Tanner Mordecai is really, is really, really good. good. Yeah. So it would behoove us to say we want Tanner Mordecai to be our quarterback because that would mean he would be out a proven Division One quarterback, Jalen Hurts, who is 24 and 24-2 as a starter at Alabama. Who Which is, is not bad. Yeah, who has won a national title who came in in relief last year and thumped Georgia. Mm-hmm. That would mean... We couldn't seem to do. Yeah. That would mean we got a quarterback that's better than Jalen Hurts. I'm I on mean, board. Yep. You know, I mean, so Tanner Mordecai is an... Tanner Mordecai was recruited by Oklahoma, committed to Oklahoma. Are you going to tell me Lincoln Riley recruited a guy he didn't think could run this system? No, I don't think so at all. Every quarterback that Lincoln Riley goes and gets, I don't care if they're a two-star or a 12-star, Lincoln thinks he can do something with them. Yeah. So Tanner's got an intangible, whether it may have been, you know what, I want to keep this guy, I, I think probably all coaches is, this guy is the perfect backup for everybody that I put in here, or this guy can come in here and push everybody that I bring in and he could win the starting position. Yeah, it comes down to whose attributes are sharper. Right. I mean, who's better on the field? And, and, and who wants it more? Let's face it, guys. Yeah. That's a lot of it, too. If Tanner Mordecai wants to be the Oklahoma starting quarterback more than Jalen Hurts, he can do it. He's not. He's a four-star athlete. He was the number 11 recru- uh, for, uh, dual-threat quarterback in, in Texas or in the nation. Last year, coming out of high school, right, right. Jalen Hurts was the number four nationwide dual threat quarterback. Year before, year, year before, yeah, but year before. but you you say, oh yeah, year before, but I mean, I know what you mean. Yeah, when when Tanner came out, he was the number eleven dual threat quarterback mm-hmm. in high school. When Jalen came out, he was the number eleven dual threat quarterback. Let's face it, the difference between in recruits between four and eleven is that it's it's not that much. It depends it, on the recruit, really. It, it may be the speed. Yeah. You know, he, he's, he's got, you know, 
four tenths of a point. But how much is four tenths of a point? Is that that much in a 440 dash? Well, here's my question, Terry. Who, uh, if it just comes down to Jalen is faster and Mordecai can throw better, who gets the nod? I know. I mean, that if Mordecai fits the system, but Jalen's faster. I mean, I don't think he's going to. Jalen's a better better runner. I I think if it comes down to that, because I think the offensive line is going to be susceptible this year, and 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 maybe a lot of the pass blocking. I think Oklahoma is going to be. We already are run heavy. We are not an air raid offense. We are a balanced punch you in the face offense, and then we're going to toss it over you well, when we need to. And it really, there's a whole lot of reads. So it depends on who can make the reads defensively right. so they know where the ball's going to go. But I, I think if Jalen is the quarterback, I think you're going to see a – because from the stuff that I've seen reading is his running ability. He doesn't just run around you. He is running over you. I mean, he's big enough. That may be just like what we were sitting at last year. I mean, the difference between the two quarterbacks is their running ability. Maybe. It's going to be interesting getting down to it. I yeah. think I think who we see first um, during the spring game might tell us a lot about what Lincoln is thinking. Right. Because he's going to need to see, you know, video on both right. of them. You know, the real game scenario or... Or similar. I mean, they, right. they still can't get hit, so that's that's not exactly a real game scenario. Right. But uh, I think I think Jalen has uh, definitely proven himself in that regard. Right. So Tanner may be behind the ball, you know, in real game scenario kind of footage. Right. But you know, and let's face it. I mean, the the, the talk and the you know the the pretty thing to talk about is Jalen Hurts, the Alabama quarterbacks now at Oklahoma. So that's where, uh, not that Jalen Hurts is not an, a phenomenal quarterback. And he's got a great, you know. But where I, what I'm just thinking is if Tan if Mordecai beats him out, that's, that's not a bad thing. I don't think. So I'm kind of rooting for Mordecai. That means yeah. we've got a really good That means good Mordecai's really good. Yeah. But also, and I think we can end it on this, don't forget, we got the number one quarterback in the country showing up in June or May whenever he's out. Did you see the workout pictures that he yes. posted today? Dude is buffed up since high school. He's getting big. I mean, he, he that's one of the things we talked about. Is, man, he's kind of he's kind of bony. He's kind of skinny. I think he's coming in to compete. Yes. I don't think he's coming in to say, okay, this is yours for a year. I think Dude. he's coming in thinking, this is my job. Right. Do not count Spencer Rattler out of this competition yet. Do not. I, I think this kid, when, when you look at his work ethic and what he's done since high school ended, or high school football ended, if you've seen his post on Twitter today, he's buffed up. He's getting some guns on him. He's getting some guns. He's starting to look like me and you. Right? Exactly. That's kind of what I got. So, Oklahoma quarterback is still in question. It's going to be a fun season. Yeah. But, you might could say the whole... No University of Oklahoma football team is in question, but right. I still feel like we're going to be really good. Oh, we're going to be really good. Our offense, you and I have talked about this a lot, Rob. Our offense is going to be dynamic as it's ever been. Yeah. And I'm not concerned about the offense. I'm, you know, my, it's the defense, and it's how long can we keep going season by season outscoring people to win games and lose in the in, in the first round of the playoffs. The defense is going to get fixed. It's just not going to be this year. We can still hope until we yeah. until we can't. So, but that's it, guys. Thanks for you know watching the YouTube channel for us. And remember, wherever you're at, to listen to our podcast, Apple, um, Google Play, Spotify, all the places you listen to your po your podcasts on. Add us, subscribe to us, put us in your loop. Hey, and come to UCLA with us. And come to UCLA, 
Dan from Tailgate Connect. It's going to have a great show out there. Going to have a good time. But, again, next Friday, the 12th, 6 to 10 p.m., right here with us, we've got door prizes. We've got some signature items to give that we're going to give away. We've got some tailgate stuff to give away. we got... We got I'm not gonna say a lot of stuff. We got some cool stuff to give away, and all you gotta do is show up, have some food, have some drinks, put your name in a pot, boom, and you can walk out of here with some pretty cool stuff. But that's it from Louis on Thursday night. Boomer up, Boomer Terry.